Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, and also known as the Knitting Samurai. And this is episode 30, Christmas is Coming. And I have this to show you. Only 120 more days until Christmas. <laughs> Not to be depressing or anything. So how you been? It's been a really long time since we've chatted. Um, as you know, I went, I had surgery. And then the whole world fell apart. <laughs> um, so today is, what is today? It must be 23, 24, 25, August 25th. Um, on the 9th, <laughs> no, on the 7th, I had uh, my gallbladder removed. Gas is pretty painful, or at least it was for me. And I didn't even realize that it could be an issue until I was laying there pre-surgery and the nurse was, you know, filling out all her questions and she just said, oh yeah, by the way, the gas could be kind of painful. And what was painful about it for me, you know, when I got out of surgery, because they inflate your stomach so they can see what they're doing. I got out of surgery and it was all tight. Of course, that would be painful. But then if I would move in the wrong direction or too much, the gas would go up into my shoulders and that was really unexpected and hurt quite a bit for me. So, um, I would say, I don't know if, Karen, you'd have to tell me, I don't know if it makes you the model patient to be out of surgery telling everyone you want to go home, you need more pain meds, or you want to go home right now. So I was up and walking and out the door as fast as I could be. <laughs> so that was fine. I took the rest of the week off and Steve took care of Roland and by Friday we went to the beach. Like, I wasn't picking anything up and I was moving pretty slowly, but, you know, we had some fun. Um, Saturday, Roland started acting a little funny. I started acting a little funny. Um, our, his Aunt Jen came to visit for an overnight and I was just like, oh man, he's a little off. This is not how the little guy behaves. And by Sunday morning, we had an emergency doctor's visit and there were blisters in his mouth. And guess what? He had hand, foot, and mouth which um, some of our friends have congratulated us that it's our first major illness, disease, childhood illness, I guess, that we get to check off as, yep, he's had it. But uh, guess who had never had it as a child? Yeah, mommy. So I got it too. <laughs> we were quite a beautiful pair, let me tell you. And um, apparently when you're an adult and you get it and it works its way around your mouth with all these blisters, when it hit my tonsils, it was the most excruciating thing I think I had ever experienced. So by that point, I went to see my doctor. I was just like, hey, do I have strep throat? What's, or is this the same hand, foot, and mouth? Because I know it's only a kid thing, but whatever. I've got spots in my hands and it looks like it. And uh, we talked about it. And really, the only thing she could tell me to do was to take Tylenol PM and sleep through it as much as I could. So I ended up taking more time off from work. Steve continued taking care of Roland. At least it was during my two weeks of no lifting more than 25 pounds. So I couldn't lift him anyways, which was heartbreaking, utterly heartbreaking to be like, I love you, here's a hug. And he's like, pick me up and dance, pick me up and hold me. And I couldn't. So, um, a cat. so that was our exciting two weeks. So, and it took, he cleared up from the hand, foot, and mouth in four days. He was better. He was off the pain meds and because it hurt so much he wouldn't eat, he wouldn't drink. <laughs> Taking meds was a challenge. But then he, uh, oh, he's coughing. Then he got over that and, oh, he wouldn't, he didn't want to swallow. Swallowing hurt so bad so that he just, like, there was a lot of drooling. But anyways, so he was four days, I was ten days. It was a really drawn out process for me to get better. So, but. <laughs> but here we are all this time later I'm recovered I've been like four days without any sort of pain medicine for either gallbladder or um, hand foot and mouth and I feel great and I'm so happy I had this surgery and it was miserable to live with and I'm so happy it's over so to live with the gallstones because I was full of them lots of little green gallstones causing lots of trouble in there so <sighs> That's enough about me. Um, I do have to warn you, there aren't a lot of shawls or really big exciting projects this week. 
Um, I pretty much wanted to do comfort knitting, and comfort knitting for me, apparently, is garter stitch dishcloths. I know I'm embarrassed. And stockinettes are vanilla socks for me. So I cast on a, I don't have myself, before I show you what I cast on, let me show you what I cast off. I actually finished a few things this week. So my SSK socks, which are the Hiawatsi Creek Farmer's Market in her sassafras base. I had one completely finished and I believe I didn't even write down that they were finished. Great show notes. I've actually had these show notes written for ooh, a while because uh, Jen and I were going to record, which we had still managed to have a, a semi-fun visit and do some knitting together. We worked on, uh, she's never knit socks before, so she does knit, but I showed her, worked her through Judy's Magic Cast On and then toe increases and knitting magic loop. She's never done that either, so fingers crossed it, it works for her. On Ravelry, she's Kaysen's mom, so. Okay, I need a little coffee there. We're out of cream market, so I had to put skim milk in my coffee. I'm not a fan of skim milk. I drink silk, so I milk. If I drink milk at all, so. give me yogurt. Don't worry, I eat plenty of yogurt and cheese. <laughs> so, here are my socks that are finished. So, yeah, straight stocking at, uh, not stocking at, um, four by two rib. Easy. Just go, right? And I I think I was slightly past the heel last time. I don't know where I was, to be completely honest. Finish. Oh, I think I was slightly past the heel, and then while I was recouping, I did the leg on the second one. So they do pool and flash, and they are crazy bright socks. Um, I like them. They're very thick. They're very warm. I... I knit them in my size, so they are size 11, and they are knit using, what size needles, 1.5, 2.5 millimeter, yes. So those, I finished those off, and then, since I was finishing, and yes, there is a little crinkle, finishing things, I thought, ha ha, I will finish these too. So, I, uh, did I cast on? God, it's been so long, I'm so sorry. I think I cast on and finished the second sock, and one of them has this amazing, sorry, Russian, modified Russian bind up, and the other one does not, so that's a huge difference in the amount of stretch I'm getting there. I don't know if you can see how much further that finger comes out, but it's fine. They both fit on him. I've tried them on. So there are those little socks for Roland, and that makes, I believe, my fourth pair of socks for someone other than me. Yes, two pairs for Roland, one from her, and one pair for Steve. So I'm not going to get the 12 that I was shooting for for 2012, but I will have a few down. So, um, so after those were done, I cast on a new pair of socks, of course, for someone else. So these are... Um, using Barocco Sock, S-O-X, in the, what color is this? Barocco Sock in Navy C, color 1435. And I went to town, so this was is what I was saying. Like, I wanted some comfort knitting. So you can see that, here's the first one. I finished it, it's a six by two rib, just simple knitting. Um, I did, um, my dad has super wide feet, so there is quite a bit extra here. Like, I make it wider around the ball of the foot, and then it goes back down, and then I start the gusset increases down here. So, he likes them, it makes them more comfortable for him to actually have a sock that's sort of shaped to the shape of his foot. He has 4E feet, like, they're really, really wide. So, yeah. 6x2 rib, and then I did a 2x2 two two rib at the top. Again, the modified Russian bind off that... I love since I learned it. So that's the first one's done. And then the second one, I am just past the heel and starting my way up the leg. I just, just finished the heel. 
So there you go. There's how that one looks. And if I hold this right, you can see, see how funny shaped it is? But that's, that's how he likes it. And of course the guy's got like bird legs. He's super skinny, so I make it wider around that part of his foot and then follow my sock pattern for the rest of his, his leg. And it's still probably, for the rest of the sock, uh, it's still probably a little loose on his ankles. I maybe need to investigate that at Christmas. But that will be my fifth pair of socks for someone else. And then um, I did sort of mention that Christmas is coming. So, so this is the first year that I will have to do gifts for daycare people, teachers, whatever. Um, there are five of them. <laughs> One primary and four that go in and out, that split up the rest of the time within the room. Because um, normally his room has two people in it. Anyways, um, so I was thinking I either am going to do a bunch of dishcloths or finger dishcloths with soap. We have a place near us, a farm that does goat's milk soap. So I went on a dishcloth knitting tear, so I don't need to take them all out and show you, but I did complete six dishcloths in that amount of time, so I thought those could be nice. You know, you fold them up with a nice, the goat's milk soap, I don't really like the soap. A lot of my friends absolutely love the soap, but it's very nicely packaged in this rustic, uh, it's Jeunesse Farms, that's the, the place near us anyways. I'll link their website in case you're interested, I don't, maybe they don't even have a website, I don't know, I'll look at it. but. Um, it's really nicely packaged, and so that, with like two of these and a bar of soap, pulled it up and tied with a pretty ribbon, I think would be really nice. So I'll either do that or uh, worsted weight fingerless mitts for all of them, because I know they go outside, the kids go outside and play for a while, which has been an interesting adventure for us. I mean, we take rolling outside, but we don't really let them sit in the dirt, so he's uh, coming home slightly brown. And if he had a day where he was just drooling a lot, then the dust gets onto it, and it's like, oh my god, you're the dirtiest thing I've ever seen. But I guess uh, you experience moms out there you know that stuff. So I've been working on dishcloths. Here's the one I've got going right now. Yes, I do have a massive cone of shame going on. <laughs> but it was in the stash, and I might as well use it, right? And they're pretty, and I like them. So doing that. Um, and then... You're probably curious about my Rockefeller. I don't know if you know what bag I keep it in, but this is the Rockefeller bag. I didn't finish. So, and at this point, I don't even think I need to warn you that it's a spoiler because it's been so long. So, here's where I'm at with all my threads in the way. That's what it looks like right now. This section over here is the fourth part. I, um, instead of just doing, and I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting, instead of just doing the brown and anara stripes, instead of doing the sandara and the into the world yarn stripes, I added in a third color because I knew I didn't have enough yarn with the sandara. So that is my leftover thicket, um, which is a Madeline Tosh Merino light. Tosh Merino light? I didn't write that down. Yeah. Um. So I added that in, and I really like the purple. I, it's it's a subtle change, but I think it's really pretty. Um, I have to do the other side. Also, I changed it, and instead of doing decreases every eighth row, I am doing them every, no, decreases every fourth row, I am doing them every other row. So I'm decreasing much faster, because this thing is plenty big for me and right now once I get this other side done and I want to be done you know so I haven't touched it in since the illness hit I was just like no I don't want to do that there's lots of other things I could be doing but yes all these strings hanging off it so it is coming along um yeah so there's that maybe it'll be done next week I don't know it's a big drapey heavy thing. hoping that it's like my earth and sky and I will love it in the post-production versus the knitting time so and yes I am pulling this out but it's not time for that yet lastly um when I was at SSK uh one of the girls I got to know pretty well is uh Steph from Busy Minds Design she does 
um, knitting bags. She did all the goodie bags for everyone at SSK. Anyway, she was test knitting this gorgeous blue shawl. And it was, it's a, I'm not sure if it's in Tarja, it's some sort of color work shawl. So it had like five, five or six different shades of blue in it. It's beautiful. And so I waited a month because I thought a month is long enough because I knew when she finished it. So I waited a month and I emailed her and I was like, all right, so what's the pattern? Is it coming out soon? I want to knit one because I thought hers was really pretty. And she said, I'll send it to you. And I was like, what? She's like, it's not published yet. I'll send it to you. And I can't just take a shawl from somebody. Come on. So I offered, since I was in my recovery, let me knit a lot of socks. I was like, all right, I'll knit you something. Tell me what you want. I'll even knit you socks. Shawl, socks, whatever. I threw out a whole bunch of things. So she said, socks. So, Steph, if you're watching, I don't know if you do, but, and you want to be surprised, I would not watch this. So I went through my stash, and I tried to get her to pick a yarn, and she wouldn't pick a yarn. But she did tell me she likes jewel tone. So I picked a yarn for her. Since this is someone who has never had socks, hand knit socks before. I know she's a knitter, but I wanted to make sure that we're going to be socks that would last. So I went with the workhorse yarn. Again, the Barocco sock, S-O-X, in, what color is this one? Nope. Uh, this is 1452. I don't know the name of it, but she loves, um, we, at SSK, we were both knitting on a fiber knit shawl in all the purples. And it's very similar colors, except that's like a very chunky stripe sock yarn. So, um, so I picked this out and I, I uh, percolated on it for several days. What? And I had several. I picked three options and then I went down to okay, it's gonna be this one. And I cast on the toe and I just looked at the toe and I thought, okay, what's gonna work with this? And I thought about doing a pair of monkeys. I thought about doing a pair of the Anastasia socks by Minty Fresh. I've done a couple of those. They're really nice. I like them. They work well with stripes. They work well with everything. And then I thought about doing the Undulating Rib Socks by Ann Bud. And those I've knit before. They were one of the first pairs of socks I knit, like one of the first three. And um, I knit them with 100% Merino yarn. And after like four wearings, had beautiful holes in them. So I ended up deciding that the undulating rib socks were the way to go. Um, it's been so long since I've knit them. I've only knit them once. I thought, okay, let's do that. So, um, this is Favorite Socks, 25 Timeless Designs by Interweave. I, this was probably the first sock knitting book I ever bought, and I thought, I know, there goes Linus. <laughs> I know. I'll knit every pattern in this book. And so while I was knitting it, I would put it Hang on. There we go. I would put a post-it for every pattern of the yarn and the, the yarn, the color, and the time when I completed it. So this was with Claudia Hand Paints and Antique Jeans, finished August 2008. Oh my god, that's so long ago. Now Max behind the camera. So anyways, uh, that's four years ago. <sighs> yeah. It's August again, you know? It's kind of funny. So, and I, I think that's a pretty cute goal to try and knit through a book. It would be fun. It would make it your favorite book, and it would make it be something that you uh, absolutely so practice this, with. Um, I want to say I probably knit five or six out of here. So I did the retro rib socks. I did all the easy ones because I was a new knitter at the time. So <clears throat> I did that with Dorchester Farm in a purple gray magenta in June 2008. So anyways, oh, I have a one a day calendar from Sunday, January 2009. One of the advantages of being disorderly is that one is constantly making exciting discoveries. A.A. A. Milne. I have no idea which calendar page a day. It just says page a day. Must have been like knitting quotes. I don't know. Something. I did the Uptown Boot Socks with Arcania Rocco in the Solid Blue in December 2008. So, anyways, this book is where the pattern came from. And I might pick up again. That's why I'm kind of going through the book. Because I might pick up again and say, alright, let's finish it. Because the patterns I didn't finish were color work, were 
intense lace or cables, things that I felt uh, were a little out of my wheelhouse, but they're all in there now and I can do it. So I'm thinking about it. But again, it's only 120 days till Christmas and I've got to book it on teacher projects, on getting socks done for my immediate family. And I'm thinking that maybe this is the year when I knit those whiny co-workers at the Fingerless Clubs. They are always admiring and complaining that I'm a knitter and I don't knit them. So. But then that would be seven pairs of Fingerless Gloves for my immediate team. Which I'm so excited we hired someone else. Oh, he's going to take half my job. <laughs> okay, so here's Steph's sock. Here's what it looks like. She had tiny feet, or at least tiny feet compared to me. So, um, yes, let me show you my purple cord. So I like it. It's, um, I can't seem to see the pattern in the striping yet, but I'm sure there will be one. So, and that's where it's at so far. And I don't even know if the, I used the undulating rib stitch pattern. I don't know if it, I think it's a cuff down sock. I convert everything to be my way. The way I want to knit it. So this is going to be my general, you know, knit to a certain point and then do the heel. No heel flap. No, I mean, no afterthought heel. It'll be a slip stitch heel, whether or not the pattern calls for that. So that's what's on my needles right now. And I know I did hand around this yarn just to tease you. So I had, we had been doing the, tell me your favorite whip, uh, discussion on the board on the board and it had been a lot of fun and we are at 70 posts for that so again this is a drawing for the fiber nymph serenity yarn 80 percent super fine merino 25 uh 20 percent bamboo because that adds up 430 yards it is a sport weight and it is the colorway hot time summer in the city hot time summer in the city back of my neck getting dark and gritty I'm sorry, I can't read it without hearing that go through my head every single time. So, I am going to generate from numbers 2 through 70. Okay. And there you go. The winner is number 25. So, if I go back to Rav, go to page 1. It will be at the bottom of page one. Tell me I'm crazy. I do not need to knit Christmas gifts for everyone. So that is... All Cat Mom. A-L-C-A-T Mom. And she said, I'd like to nominate Sp Sparky Spud, who is knitting a cute basil. I hope it's okay to snag the photo from Pluck. So there's the photo of the basil. So I'm going to leave that up to you, All Cat Mom, because I had run, been running the drawing differently. Um, if you would like this yarn or would like to give it to Sparky Spud, let me know. That is Anna. Drop me a PM over on Ravelry, and I'll get this out to one of the two of you. All right. So that's the drawing. Um, I think we're going to take a little break from doing prize drawings, just, just for a bit. So... We'll leave that at that. I do want to say a thank you to NS, the RD, who is Netta. She sent me this very adorable pattern book. Um, it's in French on the outside, and there's a lot of French on the inside, but all of the pattern instructions are in English, so I'll be good to go. Is this little boy not adorable? I don't know the name of the pattern or the name of the book, but I really think Roland needs that sweater. And there's a lot of really cute ones in here. Uh, there's another one of that little boy with a squirrel sweater. I know, squirrels are kind of bright and crazy. But I do also like this cable one over here. There's lots of great things in this book. So thank you very much, Netta. I will be using this. Steve saw me flipping through it and was like, Chickens! There are chickens! Make the chicken! <laughs> I was like, okay. He, I'm actually going to show you. He thinks this chicken... Looks a lot like the hungry, you know, happy hippo, angry duck. All right, can you sadly say cluck, cluck? So it looks like a chicken in one of Roland's stories. So, um, 
Let's see, what else do I have to say? Because I can hear him up there and he is awake. Not Steve, Roland. I got some new yarn this week. Uh, I'm just going to show you one from Desert, Desert Vista Dye Works. It is the Colorway Laser Tag. Oh my god, how crazy bright is this? It is a six color stripe. Oh, and it's really soft. It is really soft. This is a 7525 Merino Nylon, 462 yards. Wow, very generous. It says it is a six stripe repeat. So there's that hot pink, black, uh, electric blue, and then neon green. Oh, very bright. So I got that. And then I also got, since I'm, I've started, I have to show um, this one, which I was drawn to it on the website and I couldn't explain why. And again, I'm drawn to it in person. It is Schools in Session, another six striping sock yarn. And this one is like a, uh, an amber, a deep rust color, a black, a white, a light, light blue. What color am I missing? I don't know, because that's only five. Maybe white is twice. Maybe black is twice, but I think it's really pretty. So that's also new this week. Um, I think that's all I've got for a show. We will do birthdays next time. August birthday drawing. And when we get over to uh, 750 members in the group, I will do another drawing for that. So I hope you have a great week, great 10 days or so. And I will talk to you again soon. Remember, Christmas is coming. Start now. Be prepared. Don't let it catch up on you. And then you can't do all the wonderful knitting for people that you want to do. All right. That's all I got for you. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. You've got it. Which way are you going to walk? You want that one? It's easier if you get behind it, Roland. Mm-hmm.